Joining us now is Carmelo Cinqueonche. He is the executive director of the Minnesota Dental Association, and he's joining us to talk about shortages, worker shortages in the dental field. We're seeing it all across the board, right. industry-wide in this country right now, but the dental industry is no different. How are you, by the way? I'm doing great, thank Good. you. Thanks for having <laughs> I'm me. I'm glad you're yeah, here. Thanks. Uh, but it's, uh, you don't think of the dental industry as yeah. seeing shortages, but it is happening? Oh, absolutely. They're not immune to the workforce issue that we're experiencing nationwide, certainly globally. Uh, and the, the dental uh, uh, workforce has definitely experienced a tremendous shortage in allied professionals, whether it's dental hygienists, dental assistants, even dentists, uh, trying to recruit them and hire them has been really, really challenging. So why is this? Well, it's a, yeah, it's a number of different reasons, right? Like I said, they're not immune to the workforce shortage issue. There's something bigger going on here. Uh, certainly the pandemic had an impact. Uh, some of the estimates are that 5 to 10 percent of the dental hygienists and maybe even the dental assistants left the workforce during the, the pandemic and didn't return. So that is a huge, huge issue that, that many of our members are experiencing, the dental, uh, uh, the dental uh, clinic that are looking to hire these individuals. So it's, it's really getting to the point where it's a crisis because individuals can't get in to see their dentist in a timely fashion. Some appointments are out six months, some are even a year from what we're hearing yeah, from many of our is, members. Yeah, that's yeah. too long. Yeah. Are we seeing the same number of applicants going into these fields, whether that be dental hygiene yeah. school <clears> or a dental <throat> assistant, if they were going to school for that? Yeah, there's certainly a number of applicants that are going in there. Many of the academic institutions are at capacity or near capacity. So it's okay. not a question of getting them. Are people yeah. dropping out? Yeah, well, there's so many different things that are happening, right? So yeah, there may be some hurdles once they graduate, trying to get licensed, et cetera. So that might be an issue. Okay. Uh, there may be dental assistants that are completing their programs and going on to pursue uh, dental hygiene as a career. And so they're not uh, ultimately practicing what they sure. went to school for or originally. Uh, there are some, some things that are happening right now. I know that there are a couple of schools that are looking to expand their class size, double it. A lot of grants that have been offered to academic institutions to introduce a new program, whether it be dental hygiene or dental assistance. So they're trying to make some, some roads, inroads into addressing this shortage. But it is, it is severe, particularly when patients can't get in to see their dentist or certainly not in a timely fashion. So this is impacting Minnesota? Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt, yeah. I mean, I hear this every day from my members. They're calling really? me, absolutely, calling me saying, this is a crisis, this is a crisis, because I can't hire uh, the, the dental workforce that I need to take care of my patients. Wow, so what is the solution here? We just yeah. need to recruit more people into the field? and hope that they stick through? Yeah, it's, it's so there's a multiple uh, number of different uh, solutions to this problem. Absolutely I increasing the, the number of programs that are out there that are educating these individuals so that we can get more into the pipeline, get them into the workforce. Uh, certainly that's, that's one solution, but there are a number of different solutions that need to be uh, pursued here. Okay, what is your number one solution? <laughs> well, I, I think absolutely getting more folks into the field, yeah. right? Getting more programs where they can graduate these individuals and really introduce them uh, into the marketplace. We've certainly explored ways in which we can recruit high school aged individuals mm -hmm. to sort of expose them to the dental professions and get them interested in that so they can enroll in the programs, but that's not enough. We need more programs to take these students in so that they can train them and ultimately get out into the workforce. Because it is a good field to work in. It's oh, absolutely. decent pay. Yeah. And it's a good good hours. Yeah, a lot absolutely. of work, but you yeah, have decent hours when well, you're out in the field. It's a great profession, and certainly the, the shortage has increased salaries, and it's a, so it's a re real rewarding right. career. Whether certainly financially and professionally, it's a rewarding career. Are you seeing one area in is Minneapolis the area that is seeing the shortage most, or are there other areas? I would say the rural areas are seeing the shortage okay. most, but it, it is it is universal. It's across all communities across the state of Minnesota. Uh, but yeah, I was just up up in the northern part of the state the other day, and and the number one things that our members were saying, this is a this is a rural issue. I can't get folks to come up to, to rural Minnesota wow. to practice. And that's okay. dentists and dental hygienists, dental assistants. Yeah, that is a problem because you're just going to have patients that just don't go to the dentist. Yeah, unfortunately, that is the case. You know, But I would say work with your dentist, contact them. Uh, if Certainly if there's an emergency or a dire need, I'm sure they'll work with you on that. But your routine care might be pushed out six months to a year. Sure. So lastly here, the Minnesota Dental Association, is your offices are in Minneapolis. Correct. What 
what does the Minnesota Dental Association all do? Yeah, so we represent our members. They're obviously volunteer members of our organization. I usually like to think of three things that we do is communication, education, and representation. So we educate the dental community and the general public about good oral health. Uh, we, uh, we certainly represent our members in le legislative bodies, regulatory uh, bodies, and then we communicate the latest and greatest that's happening in the industry and the profession. Okay, thanks for sharing that. We yeah. have more details on our website. That's KTTC.com. But if you do know someone that is of school age or maybe even you're out of school and looking for a new profession, there's always options out there to maybe get involved and look at the dental field for your next potential job. Thank you so much Excellent. for being here. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Uh, we have much more to come here on Midwest Access.